Hello friends, good morning. It's week two of Bookopolathon and the Magical Readathon. I also realized when I was editing last week's video that I never really explained what these readathons were. I just, I don't know what I was thinking. I think I assume that because they're really big readathons that everybody's gonna know what they are, but that's ignorant. So I'm gonna explain them briefly to you and I'll have everything linked below just like in the last video. So if you wanna watch the announcement videos just to get a better idea because I'm gonna be pretty brief about it. So basically the Magical Readathon is hosted by G from Book Roast and she in the past has done a Magical Readathon but it was based off a completely different book series and now she has changed it to be based off of a fantastical world she created. It's incredible. So that being said, this is now a brand new concept of an old readathon that she had. And we are going through what is called the novice path. And this is our path on the way to a school of magic. And this school is where we're gonna study. And I think the bigger readathon with more prompts and like competitions are gonna happen. But this one is just, you can read two books at minimum or you can read all of the prompts um, to get to the school. And that's the novice path. Everyone's kind of in it together. There's a discord there's a twitter there's also another element but this element doesn't necessarily pertain to this readathon because you have until april 2022 to complete this portion but you can build the character i think at minimum it's four books and you create your character you can name them and you get to pick like your region if you're a woodsy person or an urban person you get to pick your heritage and things like that so you get to create a character those have reading prompts but you don't have to read those for this readathon to complete this readathon and then the book Opalathon is becca's readathon which is based off of her tbr game that she does every month and it's almost like a book monopoly so you roll and you land on things i'm sure you saw what i did in the first video if you watched the first video um but you roll and you land on things and that's what you read okay now now that I've updated you on what these readathons are in the second week of these vlogs, <laughs> I'll update you on what I'm reading. So I'm still reading The Dragon Reborn. I'm still only 40% into it. And I'm actually trying to focus on We Free the Stars, which is the other book that I'm reading, because I have a better chance of reading this and finishing this today than I do The Dragon Reborn. So I'm gonna try to finish this today because I have the day off and I have actually the rest of the weekend off and I'm going out of town. So I don't know how great this vlog is gonna be in terms of me updating because I'm going into nature. I don't know how much I'll update then, but hopefully I'll have some updates. But that being said, I am gonna try to finish this today because I only have like 250 pages left of it and I'm just really into it and I wanna finish it and like get to that ending because I've heard that it's a satisfying ending. Also, this one is so much more fast paced than We Hunt the Flame. And I know Tammy mentioned that it was more fast paced. I just didn't realize how much more fast paced this would be than the first one, which is absolutely not a bad thing. It was just a little bit unexpected. Like I knew it would be faster paced than the first one, but the first one, wasn't that fast paced. So I wasn't expecting this one to be as fast paced. And then after I finish We Free the Stars, I'm gonna focus on The Dragon Reborn because as you know, in the last video, I got approved for Jade Legacy. And honestly, if I start reading that, I'm not gonna finish anything I'm in the middle of right now. So I'm trying to have a little bit of restraint and I'm gonna try to finish The Dragon Reborn, which I'm not hating it. So it's not like this chore to read it, but all I can think about is Jade Legacy. So I am bringing my Kindle this weekend just in case I do get through The Dragon Reborn faster than I anticipate. Hi, I've been playing Animal Crossing and listening to We Free the Stars and there are some characters right now that I'm really scared about because they're making decisions that are concerning for me. I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous about this because this book is so much more fast paced than the first one and there's a lot of action happening and I don't trust Hafsa because she loves to hurt feelings and right now she's doing that with this book and all I have to say is that like I'm questioning a certain character who's like one of my favorite characters. And honestly, at this point, like I'm just, I'm just gonna support my favorite character. I'm just gonna support them. I haven't felt this way about a book in a while where I'm like super invested in each of the characters. And like, I'm just gonna support them to the end. I'm gonna support those characters to the end, even if I think some of their decisions are stupid or questionable, I'm just gonna support them. Hello.
Good afternoon. I finished. <laughs> I loved it so much. It was such a good ending. I love duologies. There's something about duologies that just really do it for me. And this was no different. This was such a good ending. Like she really had me there. It had a very satisfying ending. Like one that I was really hoping for, um, for a lot of reasons, especially in terms of like where characters end up and where I hoped that characters would end up and honestly even though I love this as a duology I would love to see more stories in this world not necessarily from these characters but like just more stories in this world after like I said in my last video about We Hunt the Flame if you don't like the characters at all like any of them you're probably not gonna like this series this duology because it's so character focused like you have to at least enjoy them or be rooting for them in some way for you to enjoy this story i feel like because while the second book is extremely action-packed like way more action-packed than the first one you're still heavily focused on the characters and like why they're motivated to do the things that they do and like why they make the choices that they make and like how they're fueled by the relationships that they have with each other and have built with each other. And there's an element of found family in here and you also get to see that found family come together in very unlikely circumstances and very unlikely ways. And like, there's even more to this ending that like I can see in the future that I'm really hoping for, which is very odd to hope for. For reasons if you want my thoughts on it like my spoilery thoughts on it feel free to message me but honestly this works so well for me too because i do love found families it's one of my favorite tropes is the found family trope and i love when you get to see that found family come together in really unlikely circumstances because i think some of the found families that i've read before like you kind of can tell that they're gonna come together and be a family because it just makes sense and in here it doesn't necessarily make sense that they would come together and become this family but they do and I love it so much I just love the way they love each other and have these really um real relationships especially because the found family is so unlikely that they have a lot of strife between one another and the way they handle it I think is so interesting and compelling and I think the way that they interact with each other is really real and I would just love to see more of them. Anyway, this was a five stars for me. This is definitely like these. This is one of my new favorite series. And I know that a lot of people don't like it. I understand where the criticism comes from. I really do, especially because We Hunt the Flame is so slow burn. For this being almost 600 pages, I read it way faster than some other books that are 600 pages. It's just, it makes you wanna keep reading. It's also very short chapters. And Hafsa does this thing where in the middle of action, she'll hop back and forth between a few different perspectives so that you're getting like different angles of what's happening. But it's not like a rehash of the same thing. It's just going with the flow of the action, but you're getting it from different perspectives. Another thing I wanted to update about was that I completely forgot that I bought this book at Comic-Con. It was my first time ever going to Comic-Con. I think it was 2019. This book had just come out and Hafsa was there and I met Hafsa and I think I have a picture. If I have a picture, I'll put it here. But I did get it signed to me <laughs> and I forgot I just found them, which is what reminded me that I did have a signed copy. Um, I got character cards and so I wanted to show you the character cards because I'm really excited about them despite the fact that I don't really put a lot of character art up anywhere. <laughs> it's just fun to have them I guess. <laughs> so this is Altair who is one of my favorite characters and probably the funniest character. And then this is Benjamin. My second favorite character is Kifa. And then the two main characters slash the two perspectives that you mainly get in these books is Nasir and then Zafira. 
I'm so glad I read these. <laughs> but I guess I'll start reading The Dragon or finish reading The Dragon Reborn. Like I said, I don't have much to update about it. I can't say a whole lot about The Dragon Reborn since it's the third book in the Wheel of Time series, but I'm definitely liking it more than the first two. It's just that like for some reason these books are really easy for me to put down and I don't want to pick them back up necessarily or I don't think to pick them back up. So yeah, but I'm gonna try to finish it um, today or tomorrow so that I can start Jade Legacy. Also, I started Jade Legacy, but we're gonna go explore, so I'll update you later. <laughs> excuse this because I am so tired today. Uh, I didn't really sleep well. I don't sleep well not at home. Like even if I'm so relaxed on a vacation or going away for a weekend, I don't sleep well. Um, luckily, I don't really have much to do today. So I think I'm gonna take a nap. That being said, I have a few updates um, since I didn't really update over the weekend, but I did want to like add a few more things about We Free the Stars because I feel like I updated right when I finished it or like close to when I finished it and I just kind of babbled on and I feel like I didn't touch on all of the things that I wanted to touch on. One of the things I absolutely know that I forgot to talk about was the fact that there's ace representation in here. And yesterday, if you're on Twitter, you know there was some discourse about ace representation that was really problematic and frustrating to read. Um, so yeah, I was really happy and excited to see that there is an ace character in here. And it's talked about, like it's openly talked about between two characters. And I just really, really enjoyed that aspect because the way that it was explained, it wasn't like the narrative of like, I'm broken. It was more of like, I thought I was broken until I realized this, that, and the other thing. And I just really loved that discussion um, and I love seeing Ace characters anywhere that I can find them. So I just wanted to add that into like my babbling review because I knew there were a few things that I forgot um, and one of them was the Ace representation. And I don't, I know I talked about this being fast paced, but I don't know if I talked about like how high stakes it was as well. So it was another situation where I definitely felt on edge the entire time I was reading this because I didn't know 
what was gonna happen. And like I said in my review of We Hunt the Flame, I don't trust Hafsa. So I was scared for everybody and I love that kind of reading experience. I just like being stressed out about my favorite characters, honestly, because there are some authors that you read where you know your favorite characters are gonna be fine in the end. That's not the case with We Freed the Stars. I'm not saying that your favorite characters are not fine in the end of this, but I feel like she is not an author who cares about your feelings. While I did give this a five stars, I do think there are some like things in here that could be critiqued, but I'm not here to critique them <laughs> because I just had a really good time and I had fun. And I feel like there are just those books that, you know, they're not exactly perfect books, but you've enjoyed them so much that you can look past things. So yeah, I'm done talking about this for this vlog, <laughs> but I don't think I'll ever shut up about how much I love this series. So my second update is that I did finish The Dragon Reborn. I finished it Saturday morning and I liked it. I like it more than I like the other two. So the thing is with The Wheel of Time, I feel like I liked the first book because I think for what I was expecting, it was something completely different. I had a good time reading it, but it didn't become like my all time favorite book. I was hoping that as I got into the series, I would start to feel that way just because of the fandom, like the way the fandom talks about this series. It's like, it is the best series ever written. And I'm not saying that it's not, but I am coming to the realization that it's probably not for me. Um, and that's just mainly because I'm not attached to much in this series. Like I really like a lot of the characters, mainly the female characters, which is why I liked this third book more is because you actually focused a lot more on them than you have in the last two books. And it was nice because Rand wasn't really that involved in this book in terms of having a perspective. Like he's talked about all the time. No one can shut up about Rand, but he's not the most prevalent POV, which I enjoyed more. I know people say that Rand has like this amazing arc and you're gonna love him. I just don't. So it really hinders my reading experience. Specifically speaking for the second book, I took so long to get through that book because of Rand's perspective and I just was not into that book at all. Yasmin and I both had a hard time getting through the second book, but she liked this third book a little more than I did. I think I'm giving it a 3.5 stars just because, like I said, I, I'm not super attached to this series. I think I'm going to keep going for a few more books because there are things in here that I absolutely love but at the same time I kind of dread going into a next book because I am afraid that Robert Jordan is just gonna pull a Robert Jordan and be too descriptive. And honestly, the fandom scares me, so maybe it's for the best. But the third and most important update is that I started Jade Legacy. I'm a quarter of the way in and I'm already very emotional reading it. I want to just marathon it, but I'm also scared to do that. But I also know that when the third book comes out, I'm probably just going to reread everything again. I can say though, the moment that I started this book, just two chapters into it, I already knew and could feel that this was probably going to be my favorite book of the series. The whole series is very high stakes, but this one just feels different, especially because you know it's the ending. So what's gonna happen? What's Fonda Lee gonna do? Who's she gonna kill? So I ended up reading The Bone Shard's Daughter last night. Bone Shard. It's not Bone Shards. It's Bone Shard. <laughs> but I ended up reading this last night and I ended up listening to 110 pages. So I'm now on chapter 12, page 111. Um, I'm liking it so far, but despite being 110 pages in, I don't exactly know everything that's going on. So I'll tell you what I know so far. Um, you have three perspectives in here, which for some reason I wasn't expecting. And I think that's because the synopsis only talks about 
one particular character and that is Lynn. And Lynn is the Emperor's daughter but she suffered from some mysterious illness and when you meet Lynn she has lost all of her memories and her dad, the Emperor, is basically saying that she's broken and he doesn't trust her to take over the Empire because of her loss of memories and her loss of understanding the basics of bone shard magic. And bone shard magic, as it sounds, they use bones, but they use bones from people just within their society. Like everybody has to give a piece of their bone, which is behind their ear, to the empire. And the thing about it is that when they have to use these bone shards for whatever, um, it slowly drains that person who the bone shard is from. It drains them of life. And I think that's such an interesting concept and I wasn't exactly expecting that out of this book. And I like that darkness. I also really like Lynn's perspective so far out of the three perspectives that we have because A, I think hers is the most interesting. Um, also, it's kind of a mystery because it hasn't fully been explained what this illness was that made her lose her memory. And she's sort of on this personal quest to try to figure out her memories and like train herself, but her father's not trusting with her and her loss of memories. So he's sort of shutting her out of a lot of the trainings that she should be in. And he's basically adopted this other guy who I'm forgetting his name right now. So his name is Bayan and he's adopted him as his heir as well, just because of what happened with Lynn, but he's still apprehensive and hasn't um, actually declared him as the heir of this empire, even though he's training him as such. And I think it's because her dad is actually holding out hope that she'll regain her memories or something. And she's trying, she has moments, but um, yeah, I think her perspective is the most interesting. And then you have Jovis and he is like a smuggler. Um, I, all you really know about him is that his partner was taken seven years ago and he remembers the boat that she was taken on. So he has spent the last seven years trying to find her. Um, and you see that he's involved in other things as well. And he's sort of getting in trouble with different people. But at the very beginning, you meet him and he is saving a child from the bone shard ceremony. And he saves this child and this island that they were on, that they were fleeing from sinks. It completely sinks. So that's really suspicious. That's also like a mystery within this book. And then you follow a third perspective, which I have only had their perspective twice. So you don't know that much about them. And Romani is the governor's daughter and she is currently dating a woman named Falu. But after a fight, Romani goes to check on Falu and finds out that she is missing. So it's interesting how a lot of things are going missing. There's an animal companion in here that I'm really excited about. I'm excited to explore these mysteries a little bit more, but I'm probably not going to read this for the rest of the day because I do really want to keep going with Jade Legacy. Um, I think last night I said I was like 40% into it. So this morning I read a little bit and I'm like 43% in. I'm getting close to 350 pages and honestly all I can think about is reading this. So while I'm enjoying The Bone Shard Daughter, I just can't stop thinking about reading Jade Legacy. So I'm gonna read that today. We'll see how far I get with Jade Legacy. I don't really have much to do today because I finally finished all my paperwork for my job. And now I'm just waiting on them to contact me back and tell me my first day of going in physically which I'm nervous about. It's been giving me a lot of anxiety. Um, so we'll see when my first day in the library is. Also, I slept on my hair wet last night. And so like, I can't even get it to just stay back. It's <laughs> one day I'll figure out my hair. You would think this many years alive, I would have already figured it out, but I can barely figure out how to be a human most days. Actually, before I start reading, I forgot I meant to show you what I got from the bookstore yesterday. I did end up going last night. So I picked up my copy of White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson. I am so excited. I have read everything by Tiffany D. Jackson except for Allegedly. I have fallen in love with Tiffany D. Jackson. Like, her plot twists get me every single time. This is her first 
um, actual horror book and I'm reading this for the 20 something book club hosted by my friends Casey and Mafalda and they have invited me and Rachel from Let Me in the Library to be on their live show for this book so I actually do have to add this to my TBR for this month but I actually think it fits for one of the character building prompts for the magical readathon but I'll figure that out later and then I picked up the Atlas 6 which I've been seeing everywhere I thought it was just purely dark academia which I don't think I'm a fan of I don't know that me and dark academia I don't think we have a good relationship because every dark academia book I've tried to read or have read I'm just like meh about but this one is dark academia but it's magical it's like a fantasy so I'm looking forward to this because I've been seeing it everywhere and I've picked it up in the bookstore a bunch of times before I even saw it anywhere and then it was on the TikTok table and I avoided it for a little while. <laughs> if you don't know, a lot of bookstores are doing like the book talk tables. So they have sections of their bookstores that have book talk books on there. And I avoid them, even though some of the books on there I've actually read and enjoyed, but I read them before book talk. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. I don't follow book talk. I don't really care about it that much but um I think there are some really funny people on there but when I go on to TikTok it's not for book related content it's like one of my social medias where I do not pursue anything bookish on it so I genuinely have no opinion about book talk also I really love this cover so <laughs> I really love white smoke too both of these covers are gorgeous that's what I got from the bookstore and actually this one will probably be read in one of the vlogs. Hi, it's Thursday. Um, I forgot to close out the vlog yesterday but I'm in the middle of editing it and realized that I never told you like a recap of this week. Even though you just watched the vlog so what's the point but we're gonna do it anyway. So as you know I finished We Free the Stars. I gave this a five stars. I loved this um, and this fits for the prompts of Mood Read. It only fits for the book Opalathon that I'm aware of. I still haven't looked over the prompts to make sure that I can't use this for other things but so far this only counts for book Opalathon. And then I finished The Dragon Reborn which I gave it 3.5 stars. The Dragon Reborn only counts for the Magical Readathon and it was to read a book with a map and I'm pretty sure that counts only towards the novice path so I have completely completed one book on my novice path. So those are the only two books that I finished in this vlog but then I picked up The Bone Shard Daughter and I ended up actually reading a couple like 20 more pages from when I updated you last. I think I was on page 110. I'm now on page 131 and I I had some more stuff to do on Animal Crossing so I listened to 20 more pages and I'm still enjoying it. But like I said I am focusing on Jade Legacy which as of last night, I've hit the 55% mark. Oh my God, I'm so stressed out. I'm loving every single second of this book. I don't know where it's going. Like I have a bunch of predictions and I had a bunch of predictions about this book. Some of them have come to fruition, but in very different ways than I expected. Currently, one of my predictions is kind of playing out, but again, very differently than I expected. And reading this book right now just affirmed like how great of a writer Fonda Lee is, especially when it comes to characters and politics. But like focusing on the character aspect, Every single one of these characters that you're following, you probably most likely care very deeply about them even if you don't agree with their decisions. Like for example, Hilo is not my favorite character. I know a lot of people love Hilo, like they are simps for Hilo and like I get it because I have moments of really really liking Hilo but it just comes down to the fact that he is such a well written character and he has moments where you're like okay I like you and I understand your motives and then he has other moments where I'm like what the fuck but the biggest plot twist of this book is that I'm actually really liking Hilo more than I have throughout the entirety of the first two books so there's that it's also one of those things where if you don't know in this series there's a lot of time jumps but sometimes it's jarring because in this specific book you have time jumps that are pretty 
huge. Like they're pretty big time jumps. And so like, I have to really remind myself that so many of these characters that I met when they were like teenagers, if not just early 20s are now like in their 40s going on 50. And it, I just can't, I can't age them up in my brain. It's really hard for me to do that. And some of the kids in here are like now adults and I can't age them up, but I'm really excited to see what happens with their storylines. So anyway, that is the end of week two for the book Ovalothon and the Magical Readathon. Please let me know what you're reading, how you're doing, and I will talk to you next time. Bye. Thank you.